there's so many ways to talk about you know all of the the layers and and you know in this movie even like just how everything just um can shift and i lost my train of thought it flew out of my head just like that okay <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Connecting the Dots. I'm Ignacio Rivera. I am the host, and I am here with... Lourdes Velasco. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm a parent of a 12-year-old pre-tween. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also Chamorro from the island of Wuhan. And I'm a CSA survivor, an organizer, an artist, a storyteller, and I'm so grateful to be here. With you I'm so here. happy. I'm so happy that you said yes. And um, I, uh, I always tell a little story about how we know, you know, I know the people that are uh, coming on and co-hosting with me is like, I've had the pleasure of, uh, or I should say we, the Heal Project, because I have had the pleasure of collaborating um, with Lourdes and um, API Chaya and doing some workshops together and working um, with a wonderful population of folks. Uh, and I, I can't wait to like continue doing more building with you. So thank you for being a part of this. So, yeah. We chose uh, a film from what is it, 1991? Uh, yes. <laughs> 1991. It seems like so long ago. Uh, <laughs> and it is called The Prince of Tides and it is with Nick Nolte and the beautiful Barbara Streisand. I Barbara love that Streisand. woman. God, I love her. <laughs> uh, she's so gorgeous. She's so gorgeous. And so, um, yeah, The Prince of Tides, it takes place in North Carolina or so South Carolina, I think. South Carolina. Yes, I believe so. Um, and so what, um, I always ask, like, what would, how would you describe this film, The Prince of Tides? Wow. So Prince of Tides, one, when Ignacio, when you <laughs> recommended it, I was like, never heard of this movie. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like a 90s kid. Like I grew up in the 90s. So this was like early 90s. So I was like, I probably wouldn't have watched this as a kid, but I'm really happy I could revisit it as in my age now. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, it's like early 90s, 1991. Um, you're taking on this journey with the protagonist who is a white man who's a father, um, grew up in the South. And um, it's you travel and you kind of like go into the story. And Ignacio and I were describing it as like a novel, right? And it's actually based off of a book, yeah. which I like when I read more about it, um, about his journey um, through like trauma, survivorship. Um, he's also a twin. So he, he goes from the South to visit his twin in New York after she um, had, I think her second suicide attempt. Um, and then he meets her psychiatrist and she wants to know him as her twin to understand more of her story, right? And <laughs> so they begin to like develop a connection through like him tapping into more of his his story and her his sister's story and his family's story. And you kind of go through this whole like arc of like understanding like his pain, his rage, his trauma, his relationships to his wife and his children, and also his family relationships, right? To his mother and his father and his siblings. He has two siblings on his, no, right, two siblings, mm -hmm. his twin sister and an older brother. Um, but yeah, it's, it's many layers and we're going to get into it, <laughs> but I think at the heart of it and one of the reasons why we chose to talk about it is because it is about childhood sexual abuse and survivorship at like the core of it, right? Um, like that's his specific trauma that he experienced with his, you know, his sister also experienced his mom experienced rape and, um, and it kind of talks about that trauma as like a focal point to inform like his survivorship journey um and also it's a little bit about a love and a romance which we'll yeah. get into too so it has many elements and many layers yeah. and it also has like the great aesthetics of a 90s movie yes, yes. <laughs> i hope I, that's compelling enough for people <laughs> who want to watch it <laughs> well i actually love the fact that you know like i watched it you know um at one point you never watched it and you're in a different age bracket than i am 
but I love this. I love this idea when we're doing connecting the dots because oftentimes we pick movies that are current. There's something that seems so exciting now, but I really actually love going back to watching these older movies, older from the 90s, 80s and stuff, um, because it, it, uh, one, you get to see the different ways that um, media or society tries to tell a story, how they try to tell it, convince you of a story, right? Um, you see the different tactics in the, and so I love to like see that. Um, I love to see the differences in how um, the movies are made. You know, this yeah. 90s movie has a long opening. It's so dramatic. You know, it's like it's 15 minutes in and then it's like, oh, Prince of Tides, right? <laughs> it's so true. It's like poetry in motion. You're like, yes. where are we going? <laughs> Yes, it's like, I love that. Um, sometimes it's funny, you know, to see the difference because we've come so far in how we do, you know, depending on the movie special effects and all that. Um, but, but oftentimes the actual uh, content, the issue, the problem is still the same. Um, but it's in a, it's shared in different uh, ways, right? Uh, it's, it's shared by different voices. It's shared by different voices. And so um, this happens to be a white man who's a southerner. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, so in, in talking about him as a white man and, and a southerner, I find myself going to this thing. So one of the things that came out to me was, uh, so um, his sister, again, uh, was uh, tried to commit suicide. And um, so he's trying to deal with all this, talking to the therapist and stuff. And there are like maybe two or three episodes or scenes where he is so angry. I mean, he is so angry. Like he is losing it up, you know, like it's up like here and he's screaming and really in the therapist's face and, you know, showing this anger. And then I wrote down, I like, you know, writing little notes as I watched them. And I wrote, um, he's allowed to be angry. I said, he is really, and that's a great thing. Wow, wonderful to be allowed to be angry. And then I also wrote, if you were a black man or a person of color um, or a woman, um, yeah. it would not, uh, it, would be, it would be identified as something different. You know, a black man might be dangerous. You know, it's like as soon as emotion, rage, that is absolutely normal to show, uh, it is like, this guy's dangerous, right? Or a woman is hysterical. <laughs> right? That those are the kind of the languages. But then I thought another layer of that, which I think we often forget. And I, I feel a lot of, um, I feel sadness around this, right? Because I think it's like how patriarchy sexism affects us all. And yes. so the other layer of it is that uh, as a man, even though he's a white man with privilege as a man, it, the first thought is never to even think about the possibility that this man um, has rage because he is a survivor. Um, it's um, his rage is associated with his maleness and therefore dangerous, sometimes more dangerous if they're yeah. black, brown, indigenous, right? <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, less if he's white, but dangerous nonetheless because um, he's a man, a cis man. So yeah, I found, I just, it, you said it, you know, it's a lot of layers and complexities. And I think that's why I like this movie because it doesn't make it really simple. It doesn't, yeah. it's just like, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Cause when I was watching this, I was like, oh, it's about a white family. And I think mm -hmm. oftentimes, right. When I'm going into movies and there's a lot of whiteness, I'm like, yes. okay, how will I relate to this story? <laughs> right. I'm like trying to pick and tease and pull out things that maybe like, you know, may resonate for me. Um, and I was thinking about what you were saying around him, you know, being a white privileged man, like how he's given permission, right, to be angry, right? Mm -hmm. Like that he he's allowed to be in this context, right? There's not really the consequences, like when he was like yelling at, you know, Susan or the, mm -hmm. by Barbara Streisand in, in the movie, like, you know, she's able to put her boundaries down, but there's no, like, he's not taken away, right? Mm -hmm. like, Even in the the... The, the sit of photography, right? <laughs> the, the angle of the camera, there was one uh, time when he was yelling and he was standing above her exactly. and you could see his shadow on her face. And it was so like, oh, monstrous and stuff. Yeah. And it was like scary, but it's like, you don't, you're not, it's almost like you're not allowed to see this man as scary. 
-hmm. in one way because he's white. And then it's like I had this double thing and then I was like, yes, be angry, survivor, mm. you know, like express your feelings, right? But it's just like <laughs> complicated. It's so complicated. <laughs> I feel that because like in my gut, I was watching that and I was like, okay, if I was, you know, Barbara in this scene, I would just be like <laughs> giving in or being like, you gotta go. <laughs> exactly. And she was like, tell me how you feel I was like, yeah. I like I feel it I feel like I am in danger get out of here <laughs> yeah and then you know like you were naming about um yeah because that didn't dawn on me you know as a person that just first watched this movie mm-hmm. about him being a survivor right mm-hmm. and I was like oh shit like as things went on it became more clear and I was like right. connecting his rage like connecting the dots right exactly <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, of being able to be like, oh shit, like his rage, right? Like that, it it makes sense, it's valid, right? Like his rage, especially when we think about the confines of patriarchy, sexism, like all of these ways that oppression keeps us from being able to, and in particular, cis men, young, you know, socialized boys, right? Um, around being able to communicate emotion, be able to talk about trauma, be able to, <laughs> you know, like feel, right? Yeah. And, and like you said, there are layers when we think about race, right? In relation to rage as well and, and gender. And, um, and I think about that a lot as a parent um, of my child who, you know, is like a brown teenage boy, a preteen, right? Mm-hmm. And like just knowing like socializing and him identifying currently as a boy and being like, okay, how can we move through being able to talk about emotion, be able to talk about and communicate how we feel. Mm -hmm. And also to be in a place to like practice apologizing to each other. Right. Like I think when I thought about this, the themes of like within this movie of his relationship to his mom. Right. And I know we'll get more in depth of like what, what happened in their dynamics but I was like oh imagine if like you know right after like the experience of rape that you know in this in the movie they just go back like to normal quote-unquote right they're like okay nothing happened we're gonna Mm -hmm. eat dinner with your dad yeah yeah after this very traumatic thing happened Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I'm like thinking about that in context of my own survivorship right and how like silence right permeates and like is is so is so hard and traumatic to like experience after surviving, right? And yeah. and how these tools of like parenting for me now and the healing that I'm able to experience by by parenting is to be like, it's okay for us to talk about hard things, right? Yeah. It's okay for us to have conflict, it's okay for us to be angry. Um how can we come back together and turn towards each other with trust, right? Mm-hmm. And and those are the elements of the movie that I kept thinking about that I was like, wow, there are connections to like my own childhood where silence like took over <laughs> everything yeah. and, and where a lot of the pain like survived and, and dwelled and how I'm trying to undo those things right now as a parent, right? Yeah. To be like, we're not gonna, we're gonna like actually like talk about things <laughs> yes yes you know and you, you see like with him you see like uh i guess that he breaks some sort of the cycle with his own children because yes. he loves them i mean you see yes. him, he's touching them and holding them he and they love him and so that's very very clear um he's a good dad you know and so oftentimes again we see um the male as, you know, a womanizer, um, angry, it hates women and, you know, all of these things. And so when I was thinking about what this movie was about, I was thinking, um, because I saw it before, of course, you had a different experience with the rage at first, you know, I saw it thinking, yeah, I understand this because I saw this before. And you're thinking, look at this white man being so damn angry, nobody's doing anything about it, right? And then you, you know, realizing, you know, what this is about. So I'm like, is this a movie? At first I said, this movie is about secrets, how horrible secrets are, right? Because this whole entire movie is based on a horrible, horrible secret, right? Mm -hmm. Secret and shame. Something happened, they had to keep the secret. And this is what, how many years later that they're adults and stuff. um, And 
and also how that secret completely altered their lives, you know, after the second it happened. And um, it's hard enough to like understand and, you know, acknowledge this has altered my life and like trying to work through it, but they had nothing. It was like, this didn't happen. And so, yeah, so in the movie, the, one of the biggest and the most hardest scenes uh, for me was the rape scene. Um, and this is like probably an hour and 20 something minutes in or something. So yeah. a long movie, slow burn, but very good because of all the layers, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was very, very difficult um, because it was um, uh, three escaped convicts um, in the South, escaped, uh, went to their home, broke and opened the door and um, those three um, men raped three of them, which was the mother, the 13-year-old girl, and the 13-year-old boy that were twins. They were all raped. And then the, the older brother um, was not in the house at the time, heard their screams, got a gun, came in the house, killed two of them, and the mother killed the last one. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and let me just say that this this movie is based on a novel that's based on someone's real life. Woo. So it just really intense stuff. And so the, and it, it's even about like how the different ways people um, protect themselves, right? Or how they manage with such horrific trauma, right? Yes. There's the trauma of the rape. There's okay. the trauma of the murders. Yeah, <laughs> the exactly. trauma of concealing all of that stuff like it's just so many things and then living with their father who never knew any of it right yeah. and he was also abusive right yeah, yeah totally <laughs> abusive man right mm-hmm. and so that when they when he talks about you know that scene and how they show the scene you know very intense because that, this is one of the things I always talk about in movies that have rape scenes. I always have this critique of like rape scenes, you know, like some of them I think show way too much and really make it, you know, this very sexual thing, more like a romantic thing. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, so, uh, and other people, which I like other movies don't show anything. They insinuate that the thing is happening, which is very powerful. And then this one was like little pick little moments, and those little moments were pretty intense because yeah. you really um, witness the just the complete um, fear and vulnerability of this little boy and the and everyone, you know, like. But we we actually see more front and center what's happening to him because he's yeah. telling the story, and you can see off to the floor on the side is his sister. He can he witnesses. He has the fucking view of everything. That's the shitty thing. Like yeah. he witnesses it all. Mm-hmm. The little girl's on the floor. She doesn't see anything. She's experiences it. The mother's in the room, but the door's yeah. open. She's experiencing it. The brother's outside. He is watching right on some of it, but he locks eyes with his brother. Yeah. So he sees it all, which is really fucking like horrible. Um, and then everything that happens after that, you know, burying, burying and like, okay, now we, we're okay. But to me, it's like after this big reveal, after finally we figure out, this is why she has tried to commit suicide several times. Yes. This is why you cannot show uh, emotion uh, to your wife, um, mm-hmm. probably can't be sexual either, you know, like yeah. there's an insinuation of this. We get it. And it's like, oh, so then you think, oh, the movie's over. But no, then because uh, the movie is, you know, again, in part, <clears throat> a love story, a romance. Mm-hmm. And I actually like this piece because they really get into the love story. They the, really get- The therapist and him getting together Um, He says to her, the thought of falling in love terrifies me. And she said, then let's just be friends. I love that sentence. (laughs) (laughs) There were moments that I appreciated too about, um, you know, when he finds out his wife has like an other like lover and then like they have like a conversation. You could tell he's heartbroken, but he doesn't Mm -hmm. go into this like rage of jealousy. It's more of like he, uh, he has an understanding. He's like, wow. Like shit has been hard between us. It makes sense why you would want like right. to like have emotional intimacy with someone. And then he like, you know, develops this like romantic connection with 
the this the therapist mm -hmm. right and then at the end they come back and he's like actually i want to like build with my family i know it was so beautiful it was like so i love that it was logical it wasn't based in this like a uh, romance kind of yeah. thing. It was a romance in, in yeah. a sense, but it was a very logical romance and they really helped each other out yes. in that aspect. And yeah, and she knew it, you know, and she was just like, when she calls, I know this is gonna happen and stuff. I loved when, when her, the crying scene, when he was there to say goodbye. And oh, I was like, I love this piece of saying, I love you and I feel this emotion, something that I haven't felt in so fucking long or maybe never have because of this thing, right? <laughs> this is why his wife was gonna leave him. And it's because of her, um, you know, that he was able to tap into that very thing, to leave her, to go there. Yeah. It's a tragic love story. A tragic love story. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> they really get into it. And it's like, because he was able to crack open this fucking shame, this guilt spiral of not helping his sister, being weak and being raped and all of this stuff, mm -hmm. he was able to actually feel something. So it's interesting. It's almost like the movie is broken up into the, the big trauma thing and then let's have the love story piece right yeah and i i think with that too it it also shows like this arc of him like you said breaking open and out and down to like also developing like trust like mm -hmm. through like love and care right that is is shown between him and um the psychiatrist or therapist um mm -hmm. like that that you know the way that she was able to like create and hold space or container for him to really be able to like talk about his trauma right because initially when I watched it I was like wait if she's a psychiatrist with his sister like why is he here <laughs> <laughs> and I was like oh okay like she's trying to understand you know his story and it, it like initially it sounded like they were developing like a relationship that way of like mm -hmm. you know him being like a client of hers right and right. then it evolved right um but yeah but I think the trust that was definitely an element I was just like oh yeah like you know there is beauty when when we are you know as survivors be able to like talk about our stories and and share like our shame right and the guilt mm -hmm. or things all those dynamics to be able to like truly be felt and held in it yeah yeah, I kept thinking about, you know, first I kept thinking, God, that secret must have weighed so much, must have weighed so much to hold for so many years. I can't even imagine, you know, like I know what secrets I hold, I, I held and that, you know, that's like very complicated stuff there. Um, uh, one of the things that I also, I, I, that, that popped out to me, because we, we just had a whole good spiral about the rage stuff, right? And, but another thing that popped out to me that I actually loved was that there was a gay character in the um, movie, um, the sister's uh, um, neighbor, and also more like a family member, a chosen family member, right? Because he, he checks in on her and knows about what she's going through. And, um, he has a nice little connection with this gay guy. Uh, he goes to his party, he dances with him, um, other gay guys hit on him and he respectfully declines and all that <laughs> stuff. I do love this because, you know, as you find out later that he is a survivor, that he was raped um, by, you know, a, a man like that, um, that he doesn't hate other men. Mm -hmm. You know, like that, that narrative, like one, you either must be gay or you have to show this hatred of gay men because you have to prove that the rape did masculinity. Yeah. 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 So I really like that. I like that because it, it's almost like that character didn't even need to exist. And they, they really showed some good aspects of, again, him being a good father, him uh, being able to, I think, you know, show some, some sort of a connection. You know, he had a lot, he used the humor a lot. Yes. Like total humor. Yes. Um, but he couldn't, I guess, tap into the, the love and intimacy connection that his wife needed uh, from, mm -hmm. from him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I did appreciate that too. There was definitely the elements of him going to the party, getting hit on, you know, and he was like, oh, okay. You know, like he's, he's like, oh, okay, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. And there wasn't like, you know, explicit, um, 
homophobic anything like remarks right that was like right i was like bracing myself for that actually I was yeah like, you almost okay. expect it right but it's like, oh. gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like where's the homophobia I i'm like oh shoot and i think i'm also like thinking of like because i know barbara streisand also helped direct this film right yeah. and i'm like so cute like i'm sure like elements of like how she wanted things to be portrayed and characters to like i'm like I'm, I'm curious of like how much of a role she played in a lot of mm. those, mm. you know, scenes, right. And relationships right. and like also challenging um, or bringing more of a tenderness of like tender masculinity that <laughs> we don't see a lot in, in movies. Right. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah. Because he also has that nice relate. He builds a nice relationship with um, the psychiatrist's son because yes. being a coach, a football coach to him, um, and yeah, this beautiful connection that they have. And I think that uh, they helped each other, you know, in a lot of ways because she was like distant from her own son and he kind of mm. helped create a bridge there. Um, and then she helped him tap into something that they could not talk about, that the mother forbade them to ever, ever speak of, right? Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. So it's like the it's it's almost like this, you know, family dynamic of it always makes me think of Aisha Simmons books, you know, um, uh, Love with Accountability. It's mm -hmm. like how we were, you know, like children in this book is specifically talking about black families and all people in the black dysphoria. But it's like in in here, it's like if you care about anything or this family, you will never, ever tell what happened here. And how the power, I mean, the power of secrets, like, and so I think about where they all kind of went, right? So it's the mother, Luke, the older brother who killed two of the people and the twins, right? And then the father who's like off to the side. So I'm assuming the father and her divorced because he's no longer in the picture at some yeah. point, right? The mother marries Rich to get taken care of. She had a mission. <laughs> and she and she and she got what she wanted. She married rich. Um, Luke went to war, right? And I, yeah. I almost wonder if that was actually as a result. You know, I mean, you know, I don't know if he got drafted or anything, but like going to war and then coming back. And his story um, is that he got shot because PTSD. Mm -hmm. they, they, they kind of accompany it to the war, but I suspect his PTSD was both. Yeah. You know, like he was not raped, but he was, a, a, he, was, he was a part of that trauma, you know, mm -hmm. like he witnessed that. So it, he had like a backstory of like kind of his trauma, what he went through and ultimately um, he died because, because of it. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then, um, then the twins, you know, this guy goes off, he has a wife and he has children, but he can't love his wife. Yeah. And then his sister, who's a brilliant poet and writer, who is, has tried to kill herself several times because she can't, she has this trauma, right? It's like um, hiding, hiding, died. Yeah. Hiding. Yeah. Know? And she also gets institutionalized. I think that's also. Yes, yes. Right? Like an element yeah. and I'm thinking of also the themes of mental health, right? In yeah. relationship to all this trauma as well. That's so true. You know, I, ha I hadn't even thought about that piece and that is a huge piece uh, yeah. about even that privilege around even her care, her care. Like it's so beautiful, the care that she got that mm -hmm. this doctor told her brother to come down and the doctor took the time to sit with this man and have exactly. all these sessions. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is a movie. This is wonderful. You know, like like that does, I don't think that, that ha if it happens, it's very rare. And mm -hmm. so she got a level of care, kindness and consideration that many, 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 many people do not get. You know, when, yep. people, when people break down, when you try to kill yourself, your ass, what is going to a mental institution, mm -hmm. you may be going to jail or something. Jail, yep. Um, so it, it, it's um, wonderful that she got that support and able to heal and be able to get back home to, you know, begin, you know, her life. So it's like a lot of um, definitely appreciating that and thinking about, you know, fucked up, you know, 
uh, oppression that yeah. we don't get to do that. You know? Exactly. Because I'm like, imagine if we, you know, especially like cutie BIPOC communities have access to that type of care. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like thinking about like, um, I had um, gone through a really, really bad uh, point. I had gone through some severe trigger moments in my life and I, I felt like I needed to go to a place. And so mm -hmm. I started looking. You know, I started looking, I was feeling very suicidal. And mm -hmm. um, when I, and then in looking for a place that I could like go to, um, I was, I guess I was living in a bubble in my head. I thought I was living in a fantasy world because I thought I was going to find some nice little place mm -hmm. that, you know, was like open to people who are survivors or need support. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yes, we have horses that you have equestrian therapy we have this we have that all you have to do is pay forty thousand dollars for two weeks yeah so that wasn't happening what? and so i ended up actually having to do or doing a um outpatient uh thing with the hospital for a month which was a little helpful but not the best you know even yeah. that kind of care that level of care was almost like an assembly line of care with other people in group therapy, um, mm -hmm. it's quite interesting. And then um, after that, trying to find a support group for adult survivors, yep. very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. And on top of that, none for people like me. Oh, yeah. I was saying before, like when he was recalling the, um, the rape, um, he said several things that just like stuck with me and it was, um, I didn't know it could happen to a boy. Yep. Straight away right there. Like Oof. Uh, that piece was so intense because as he's telling the story, they're cutting back and forth to yeah. what is happening. And he, you could see the confusion and just horror of this. It was like, I just didn't understand like that this could happen to a boy. Um, and then the, absolute guilt because of that same sexism and patriarchy because it was like I was bit like basically he almost kind of said like I was busy being raped so um I I didn't do anything <laughs> like basically I didn't do anything and then yeah. she's like but you were being harmed and uh and the way he put his brother up in this wonderfully beautiful pedestal yeah. around yeah. like he was the hero he helped us he did something I did yeah. nothing and I think that that was very much based on him being a boy. Yeah. You know? Like it was totally based on that. Yeah. And then um, the other thing he said was silence was worse than the rape. That was intense. Oof. I was like, that got me. And I was like, Same. that is so fucking true. Like that is horrific, that experience. But when you are made to or told to, or you think, that you can never say anything, God, that's like a, a just a, a, a destroying inside your body that just continues to happen yeah. or, or has the ability to just continue to happen like that. Yeah. So yeah. that, that's, that um, statement was like, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That totally resonated for me too. Cause I was yeah. thinking about like, you know, the silence and the layers of his mom, right. Being like, we're not going to talk about this. And it made me think a lot about like my own experience of like telling my mom the not being believed, right? And mm. then this blanket of silence that was just like it cut, you know, like swept under the rug, like let's just keep, you know, living, yeah, yeah. like nothing happened. And and how much that silence did, you know, like hurt me, hurt so many people in my family, right? And um I was thinking about that too. Like there was an element of him and his silence was also like, he had a really intense relationship with his mother, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could tell that he was very hurt by her, right? There was like anger in him. Um, and there was also a sense of like needing to protect like her in a sense, right? Like there was, mm -hmm. and I think that that's very like relevant to me in my story of like the sense of like, okay, I need to protect my mom. I need to protect my family. And I got to hold all these things and my own trauma, right? <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, and as a child, like we should not have to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and I think for him too, he like, 
he like that scene you were talking about where he was like, I couldn't do anything. Like he was a child, right? And like that that sense of responsibility, that weight of like holding, like you have to be a carrier or fix things or hold things for people. It's like I have to remind myself, I was like, I was a child. Mm -hmm. Like that Mm -hmm. wasn't those were things I, I wasn't supposed to be holding. Yeah. And so that that those scenes like definitely that the silence quote as well i was just like it caught my heart <laughs> like mm-hmm. i'm already like teary-eyed talking about oh no i was a fuck i was crying my ass off after yeah. the movie i was like in I, just in total tears like when yeah. he said that and just like also the part when he finally cried because in the movie they set it up like he's talking because he's a jokester he uses like yeah. you know humor all the time that pisses his wife off constantly because he's never serious and he gets to a point where he actually says it. He says it out loud for the first time since it happened, what, 30 something years ago? And he starts to cry, you know, because afterwards, like, she's like, how do you feel? And he's like, I feel great. I feel good. I feel, and the, I remember the first time I saw this movie, I was like, oh, that's me. Cause I'm like, I'm energized, I'm this. And I'm like, that's a fucking lie. You're about to bust out crying in a second, right? <laughs> And he did, he did. It was just like, I was like, yes, release that. Release the guilt, release that you can't cry. Release it all. And I was like, oh, that was like, um, for me, like that once the secret is is out, it changes everything. It It does. does. I believe it. I believe it to my core. Like when the secret is told, it changes something. It changes and it could be, really a really difficult journey that this is not to say that telling will make everything easy but it is a uh a a piece of healing and getting to to ourselves and Mm -hmm. releasing guilt um and all of that and you know and thinking about like this movie we've talked about a lot of different ways that like how this can be relevant to talking to our kids like secrets playing like totally this this can be all about like how secrets fester and what they can do to people this can be about relationships about how this man we knew that he loved his family intensely Mm -hmm. but he could not he could not love the way that she needed why was that so you can dig into emotions and feelings and you know even thinking about how we've kind of talked about this um uh, around gender and the the expectations of gender Mm -hmm. um and of course as parents of color we're always going to bring in the race aspect to this shit and class right like how would this look different um how would a you know how would a little child of color be perceived in talking about this Mm -hmm. um or what are the things that we can talk to our children so that they feel that they always have the 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 right you know the right to say what they need to say um the right yeah. to um like trust their gut um the yeah. right to question their parents oh you know? yeah <laughs> the right oh yeah to push back respectfully but the right to push back <laughs> no i totally agree i recently did this um consent workshop with like cutie BIPOC parents and like BIPOC parents and we had those conversations around like what do you do when your child does push back and like Mm -hmm. you know like how do we engage and we actually um quoted and used a lot of we referred to um your interview with parenting for liberation and the beautiful like quotes about consent and talking about um you know like having other adults in your life that kiddos can talk to yeah. right or um being able to 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 tell your children that you want to learn with them mm-hmm. and I think there's so much beauty in that like for me and with as a survivor too is like yeah I want to like have these hard conversations right like um I want to like even though sometimes like especially with the free tween when I'm like hey can you take out the trash and he's like I'll do it later and I'm like Okay, (laughs) you know, and if I said that to my parents, that would be a whole other story. (laughs) Those words would not be able to come out of my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Like anything other than yes, ma'am or sir. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So, yeah, I think I was talking to parents about that. I was like, the fact that our children could tell us no, 
right? In, or even like yeah. respond to us is like so beautiful, yeah. right? Like yeah. to be able to like tell us anything that they feel is is a gift, right? And really so, is. yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that lately of like how the difference between like, you know, the secrecy and, and, um, and of like my survivorship within my family and then thinking about now in the context of being like, actually problems should not be secrets, right? Like actually, right? Like how do we teach our children that like, per, you know, perpetuating secrets can create like yeah. long lasting impact, right? <laughs> um, exactly. And instead like being able to talk about our problems and like until someone's able to like receive and listen, right? Mm -hmm. um, or even like call on other people that we trust right? Yes. Like other adults, other loved ones in our lives to be able to receive our stories, right? Because I think about my older sister was one of like my biggest advocates, right? Outside of myself and um, who was like, believed me right? and was like, okay, you want us to like talk about this and confront the person that harmed you? We're going to do it as a council. We're going to come together right. and hold each other, right? Mm -hmm. And even though we may not know like all the elements, we just knew something wasn't Right, right. And so yeah, I just think about I think about all of the layers of that, of like and even in this in the context of this movie, how much he loves his sister, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, and like and and he has that shared experience of survivorship too. So yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. It was um the the another part of course that made me like tear up and cry all over the place was <laughs> when um when she um <clears throat> was out you know out of her out of the hospital in the home it's you know kind of wrapping up there and she is starting a new book of poetry and she says she's dedicated to you know she she's dedicated it to someone special and even in that moment he still talks about his brother he said yeah. oh luke would have loved that and she says not luke you you know mm. like i dedicated it to you I thought that was so sweet because like, again, he still doesn't see himself as any of any importance here, but really he's pivotal in the, the healing of his sister, right? Because in, the, in yeah. the dedication, she says to my brother, Tom Wingo, my memory. Mm. And I was like, oh, you've been saying it, I wanna cry because- I know, like- <laughs> Because it's like, you know, you can, we can have a whole nother conversation about memory and survivorship. You know, like, you know, like she had this stuck thing. She couldn't remember the many chunks of her childhood were forgotten. Same here. Like yeah. there are chunks that I cannot remember. And so he really played a huge role. He remembered the pieces that she needed. And because of that, and you know, like, and because of this community care, right? Maybe, maybe here, this is not this radical model that we're looking at right now, but in a sense, she reached out, she got information and the, two of them work together to help, you know, his sister. Exactly. Um, we have, you know, a lot of different ways we do that in circle and, you know, and, and transformative justice in indigenous communities who are, you know, working through um, conflict uh, mm -hmm. and using different models that come from people of color and indigenous communities. So not the same, but in the context of this 1990 movie, you know, saying like, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, um, trying to put the puzzle pieces together um, really yeah. helped her. And I think in that moment, he might have saw his importance and his role and a remembrance that he too is a survivor, you exactly. know, like <laughs> that he too has suffered um, and that it wasn't just his sister um, who um, is like the more visibly affected person, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. She's the only one that's visibly affected, but they were all affected and expressed it in different ways truly yeah yeah and that's another thing too like how there is no one way to be a survivor oh yeah look at all of the ways that um they were all survivors right all the different yes. ways um and how difficult it is but like the i guess also like the a good piece of this is is like you know they revealed the secret but the the underlying thing is you know talk <laughs> Talk. Yes. Release. <laughs> Release, right? His wife was like, talk to me. 
talk to me. You know, the therapist was like, talk to me. Stop screaming and sit down, angry white man. You know, talk, <laughs> talk, talk. But getting to that talk, it's about tapping in. It's mm-hmm. about like uh, saying, oh, this is the truth. This is what happened. Like, yeah. this is what happened. And, and even the telling the story of, of the, the reveal, the rape that happened, he first says it as, yes, three men broke into the home. My sister was raped and my mother was raped. Yeah. And he left it at that, right? Because again, it's almost like his rape was insignificant next to his mother and his sisters, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, then when she kept pushing and pushing and saying, where was the third man? What were you doing? Because he was like, I, I didn't help. I didn't help. But she was like, but what were you doing? And then getting to that, it was almost like um, telling, you know, like giving him permission yep. to be a fucking survivor, mm-hmm. you know, like break down, feel what you're feeling. Um, yeah, it was really, it was really good to like um, see that. Uh, I, I like the way the film showed his face while he was, going back and forth. It was like, she was like, what were you doing? He's like, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. I couldn't help. You know, it was like this confusion and she's like pushing, you say it, say it, say it. She's pushing and pushing it. And then he does. And thank goodness she was there to hold him because that's also another thing. You know, if you're, she was a, a psychiatrist in this movie. So she was able to hold this and how difficult that is. Um, to hold something like that, especially if she's, if you're provoking, <laughs> you know, if yeah, you're asking exactly. the questions. So um, exactly. being prepared uh, for that to, to help to hold or to pass along uh, with other people. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. It makes me think of, you know, like what brought him to that point, right? We talked a lot about his rage that was like in your face. And as he started like being able to talk about his story and get to the root of it, I. It makes me think of um, Lama Rod Owen's book, Love and Rage. Mm-hmm. Have you been? Have you read that book? No, no. Oh, I totally recommend it. I'm mm-hmm. still getting through it, but like the, at the core of it, Lama Rod Owens talks about um, how oftentimes our rage, right, is is behind it, and what's deeply rooted in it is like deep heartbrokenness, deep mm. wounding, right, like hurt, and. Um, and, you know, and able to access like that hurt and the root of it will allow us to be able to go on this path of healing, allow us to experience, right. And, mm-hmm. and, and like experience love or like to see that, that those things are all interconnected. And it made me think a lot about his journey, right. Of like, yeah. you know, like using humor as like deflection, right. Um, yes. Rage, right. Like that was just like, front and center and and as he like started to get to the root right it's like he's heartbroken he's wounded yeah. he's hurt like yeah. because of this trauma um that allows him to like open up and 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 go on this journey of like healing and choosing himself and and to like experience love right yeah. <laughs> and, and like in the part after the scene um yeah <laughs> right that's the yeah. love story afterwards the second afterwards. part <laughs> When they're running around and holding hands and having a picnic. And yeah, they're like, you know, <laughs> prancing around a field. And I'm like, where is this? It's like 90s romance movie. <laughs> and the scenes where they're like touching each other. Yes, yes. It's like, I love you. I love you. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> um, so they like really lived in the moment, which I also liked. They lived in the moment and he got to express and feel so many things. And then his wife called. And then in that moment when he's saying like the, like, I'm going again, loved it because he was dedicated to his family um, and wanted to, you know, make sure that that worked uh, and that it wasn't this uh, romance story where this guy from, you know, North America or South, I mean, South America, uh, uh, North Carolina uh, <laughs> moves to New York all of a sudden to be with his, you know, very, um, you know, pricey psychiatrist uh, lover. Uh, <laughs> this is not the, the movie. The movie is, uh, is this a love story about loving his fucking self? You know, yeah. like really getting to the point that he is, he has uh, the capacity to, because he's let that go. 
you know? So to me, that's the thing. I'm like, yes, you're able to now. You're able to go back to your wife. You're able to start that process of like, mm. and I think in the last piece of the narration, he says something like, uh, my children and my wife were witness to my story. So like he indicates that he tells them, you know, like again, telling, telling, and now another layer of the, the healing um, process for him. So I'm like, yes. So beautiful. And, and again, so privileged, but so, so beautiful, you know, like we are, yes. and again, even though very privileged does not take away the horror and the trauma that this person has experienced, but, you know, parallel, putting that parallel to the many, many, many survivors that exist out there who um, exactly. do not have the resources and stuff like, yeah. it's a beautiful way to see how healing can happen. And um, yeah, and thinking about the realities of healing today. Yeah. Oh, totally. And yeah. to remind, yeah, I took it reminding myself, I'm like, this is a white privileged family. <laughs> 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 well, watching this, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, there's so much beauty. I love that you named um, how he said his family was able to witness him, right? Like mm -hmm. there was um, one day I talked to my kiddo about, you know, like just a lot because he's witnessed me go through like my depression and mm -hmm. like, a lot of things in my survivorship. And I remember telling him about my story, right? Um, and we both like held each other and cried in my bed, <laughs> you know, like, and he was just like so sad that I experienced, you know, harm and, and, and knew who harmed me. And, mm. um, and he just like cried with me. And I was like, wow, like, I never <laughs> thought that, you know, I would, be able to create or like be able to talk about this and with so much honesty but I was like I want you to know like a lot of the things I'm experiencing with my mental health are really rooted in a lot of this trauma and I don't want you to feel like you have to hold it for me right but I think it's important that you understand that like there yeah. are times in my life where I'm I'm you know I'm like I go through that parenting guilt of like not being super present right and I'm like ah but I'm like yeah, actually um, like this practice of honesty is yes is so important, right? To be like, because I know like growing up, my parents didn't tell me a lot about their mental health or like what they were going through. But I know that there now there is like a history, right? Yeah. Of like things with mental health and suicidal ideation and and like depression, right? That my parents also experienced. And so I think about this gift of like letting my child know like hey, if you do experience these things too, you're not alone, yeah. right? And and to be practicing vulnerability in that way when yes. we're not often modeled that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, is definitely such an experience. So yeah, I appreciated that, that reflection of the film because it made me think of the ways that, you know, um, I, my story has been witnessed by my child, you know? I'm like, wow. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and same with my daughter. I, I feel like that was a beautiful thing to be able to talk to her honestly about it and get um, just, you know, a beautiful response back and support, yeah. constant support. I would say my daughter has been my biggest support in my survivorship. And that's beautiful to me that I was able to, you know, have to, I, I had to, like I had to explain, you know, all those little nutty things that I do, you know, how I get like really controlling and yep. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's part of my PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> so real. <laughs> and I'm working on it, you know. So, yeah, just uh, giving myself some leeway, you know, that um, I, um, I have fucked up and, I, and, you know, I have an adult daughter now, but still in retrospect, thinking back of um, what, what are the ways I could have talked differently and then thinking about my grandson now, you know, like how to you know, right my wrongs and share um, those things. So really just continuing to try to break the cycle in so many ways. And to me, it's like yes. talking, talking, just talk, talk, talk. It is, it's just talking. <laughs> but thank you so much for um, dissecting uh, Prince of Tides. Uh, I actually have been thinking about this movie for many years because I, like I said to you when I recommended it, um, it, it really imp it like imprinted in my brain um, uh, this movie. And it was like, especially because of the, the scene 
um, it was very impactful and it was good to like rewatch it um, mm -hmm. and come to a good place and a, a less triggery place, you know? Yeah. Um, doing these connect the dots sometimes with certain films, it's just like, okay, prepare. And now I'm going to cleanse afterwards, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to hold this, you know. Yeah, this is such a great practice to be able yeah. to like release and, and pull out like the themes of, of films that sometimes when we watch by ourselves, like, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to like digest. <laughs> it's true. I'm always wanting to talk to somebody. It's like, did you watch this movie? I want to talk to you. I have to, I have to process, I have to process. With yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for processing with me thank you it was a pleasure it was so much fun and you know <laughs> deep tender all of the layers <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thank you everyone for joining us for connecting the dots again this was prince of tides and uh you can watch it on hulu if you have a hulu subscription um yeah and we will see you next month thanks a lot bye everyone bye everyone Thank you.